for the Shop Report with... What up, sports fans? Welcome to the Shop Report. I'm Barbershop J. I'll be your host for the day. Here's what's happening. If you're up and around, you're out and about, although this show is being, of course, pre-recorded, and you just happen to be out there listening, you're up and around, you're out and about, and you want to give us a shout, that number to call is area code 267-687-0026. Again, that number to call is area code 267-687-0026. Joining me on the show today is none other than my two special guests, my cat from the NYC a.k.a. Rucker Park, Brother Richard. Bro, Rich, what's happening? Good, sir. How are you? It's always good to be on. As usual, we're always an honor to be here with you and our listeners. Yes, indeed, indeed. And I kept my dude on the other side of the table or the other side of the ledger from up north, Joey James, a.k.a. Double J. Tell the people what you got to say. And then there were four. Oh, man, you know what? I, that's, that's thievery. Hold up, man. I wish I had a... I wish I had a ref whistle. I'm, I'm going to add that to my little sound, my sound effects here. Every time you say something, I'm going to have to blow the whistle, man. We're going to need, that's a, I'm going to need, a, hold on, that's a 15-yard penalty. That's really what I'm driving at here. Mm. How are you going to steal mm. my line, man? That's my line, man. Come on, man. Mm. You know you know what, Double J, I see mm. right now, man. See, you like, um, I used to watch this show called Unsung, and they talked about how musical groups started out and where they ended up at. You know, just like the Supremes, man. It was all three of them, and, and Destiny's Child. It was all, all three of them was all shoulder to shoulder. Then once the one girl, Beyonce, started, you know, getting a little shine, they started putting her out front. I see right now you're trying to get your own program. Is that what you're trying to do here? Is that what's going on? Hmm. Yeah, that's what I'm No, not at all. Oh, stop it. <laughs> stop it. You know what? I tell you what, as, a, as, as, as the contributory person type person that I am, I will make sure that I send you at least a microphone to help you along in the way of your own podcast one day. Because I'm telling you, you can't keep stealing lines, man. <laughs> yeah, you see what I'm saying? You see, you hear that chuckle, mm. Brother Richard? Ha, 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 like, yeah, dad, mm. you got me. Um, yeah. mm. But we are here, of course, today, as Double J pointed out to us, to discuss this March Madness and the point that we are at now. And then there were four. I hate to be redundant, but I have to because... I am the host. Thank you very much. I just want to remind you all of that. Uh, I'm being facetious, of course. Nonetheless, as we get ready to break down the final four combatants or contestants in this March Madness or the end to March Madness, it's just kind of sad, man. The March Madness seemed to, it didn't came and went so fast. Do you ever recall it coming and going so fast, Brother Rich? Well, you know, when they're good like this, they always seem to they always seem to come real fast. Yeah, but it's gotcha. good though because. Yeah. I think yeah, so it's, too. It's, you know, the good things like I like that. Yeah, I think so too. What about you, Double J? Yeah, that's that's been my personal gripe with the tournament overall because it, it does, you know, it's it, it's like a shooting star. You know, you see it and then it's gone, and you know, you you don't even really get the opportunity to savor it. And this this particular year, I tell you what, I, I don't know if it's just I've had the amount of time to really sit down and, and buckle up and watch these things from, from start to finish. But, you know, we've gotten our, our money's worth. Uh, I agree. In this tournament. I agree. Uh, you know what, before we get started on, you know, breaking the teams down and making, uh, like I like to call it, you know, little tidbits, a little nuggets about each team. And of course you all are going to have to, we all are going to predict who the final two combatants or contestants will be. And of course, who will be the winner of it all. But before we really dive into this, I wanted to read to you all a little something I wrote down. Now, I don't know if it's just me or if it's any other host for any other talk show, whether they're making money, commercials or not, or just some guy in his basement in the lab just, you know, figuring out how he's going to do this. But every now and again, man, when I'm sitting here and I'm on a computer and I'm perusing, you know, possible or potential subjects to discuss, I get a thought, man. And it's so strong a thought that it, I, I have to stop in mid thought, and I have to I grab my pen and my piece of paper. You ever you ever had you ever, have you all ever had a moment like that where you just know you got to write it down? No, I can say I have. Yeah, well, I'm watching the Celtics in the Heat on NBA TV, and if you don't have NBA TV, by the way, 
you all should get it, especially to the listeners out there, the one, two, three, four, five of you all who are, are listening. Uh, you all should get NBA TV. You'll see a huge, if you don't have it. Well, let me ask you, Brother Rich, you got NBA TV? I do not. Uh, you got to get it. What about you, Double J? I have League Pass, so absolutely. I, I okay, so you are, so you're Every night's enjoyable. Yeah, and you know, aside from the games, what I find more compelling about NBA TV are the shows, the, the talk shows. Of course, it's basketball-centered, right? But some of the former players, well, most of the former players that I've seen on the shows, and I've seen David Griffin a time or two, if you, if you have NBA TV, you know how they do the basketball pre-games and um, what's the one, NBA players only, or what? that's TNT. Um, I think NBA TV does it too. But anyway, at the end of the day, man, you can tell the difference in the information being given, given and the substantive nature of the information versus the ESPN and the sports centers. You get what I'm trying to tell you? You can see the commercialization to, from the okay, one on the absolutely. left. You feel what I'm saying? I can see that. You know, and, that. as opposed to the the in-depth, you know what I mean, uh, you know, knowledge from the one on the right. And I'll sum it up as this. Brother Rich, you and I used to have this conversation all the time. We talked about basketball players, you know, in particular the NBA and so on and so forth. Um well, I'm going to use my boy, your boy too, Kobe. When we talk about those players who are, are worthy of or who garner, you know, household mention, some of these dudes, what's, what's my saying? When you're watching them in a the game, you bring your popcorn because it's brand skiball entertainment. But when you're dealing with a guy like Kobe or Jordan or Tim Hardaway or Penny Hardaway or Mark Price even or Stockton or whatever it is, you got to get a pen and pad. And that's the difference in essence between – the one on the left, the talk shows on the left, and the talk shows on NBA TV. So I'm watching the Celtics in the heat, April 1st, of course, and this is not a joke, all right? I know April Fool's and all that. Did you all pull a couple of April Fool pranks? Probably did. But anyway, um, yes, I, I thought I uh, – Absolutely not. Okay. Yeah, I didn't mean to hit that, but okay. <laughs> it, 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 it fits. Um, I'm watching the Celtics. In the heat on NBA TV the other day. And it was a Miami player. Because they do this like uh, around the league. They go around the league to a couple of games. And let, they watch, let you watch a, a nice, you know, six, seven minutes work before they switch to another game. You know, that type of deal. It's like a around the league live type of deal. So I'm watching Miami. I forget who they were playing. Duh, that's the senility again. Bear with me. Um, and it was a Miami player. And he's the guy who comes off the bench for uh, Hassan Whiteside. And he made a play. And Bro Rich, Double J, he made the kind of play that embodied what we've been saying and going to continue to say when we talk about this game that we say we love, right? Indeed. He made a play. It was a grown man move. I saw it, too, with my own eyes. And that play in particular prompted the in-game announcers and former NBA players, Rip Hamilton and Brevin Knight, to point out the effort. And I underlined effort when I wrote this out. The effort given on that particular play from that particular player. Now, what's his name? I forget. Sorry. Look it up. But Brevin, in particular, said something that summed up what we've been talking about, especially you and I, Brother Rich, for years when it comes to this game that we say we love, right? Right? And that the craftsmanship and the effort that you have to put into it if it's going to be your craft. Matter of fact, let me, a side note, I don't know if you're familiar with him, but he's a Facebook friend of mine. One of the few guys in the country outside of um, Earl. Oh, what's Earl? What's little Earl that was from here, man? I don't know why I want to say Earl Watson. Earl, Earl Boinkins. Earl Boinkins. No, Earl Boinkins Earl from Boykins. Cleveland. Yeah, he's running a, a camp in, in Colorado. A lot of former players are running these AAU camps, right? I'm telling you, with my own eyes, the, the, those are the only two guys who Michael Duncan is, runs OBC here in Ohio. Michael Duncan and Earl Boinkins camps. And I haven't seen Earl Boinkins camps, but I know Earl Boinkins, okay? They're two of the cleanest, most fundamentally sound AAU programs that I am familiar with, okay? I can't speak to the ones in Oregon and, Colo in Colo you know, not Colorado, uh, New York, you know, Texas or all other places. I, I don't know. But you hear a lot of talk about AAU programs, and Kobe even said it himself. AAU basically didn't kill basketball. But I promise you, not to get my point, pat myself on the back, when I was on head-to-head -head 
with my co-host Walt. Yeah, Walt, I'm mentioning you. We had this conversation long before it ever became a conversation to have. I said, man, hey, you didn't kill basketball, but we're not going to stay on that. My point is, it summed up what we've been saying and what, as far as the game and why I call it the, the, uh, the NBA the Today BA or New BA or say, why I say brand, brand skiball. And then I didn't even realize that this is the nature of why I, I came up with those things. Not until I heard him say it, Brevin Knight. And then I said, wow, that's where that comes from. And this is Brevin Knight. This is what he said. It's unfortunate that in today's game, effort is a skill. Now let that sink in. Effort, I repeat, is a skill. And I said, wow. First of all, how many words are those? It's one, four, unfortunate, two, that, three, in, four, today's, five, game, six, effort, seven, is, eight, a, nine, skill. Ten words. You all understand. Those ten words summed up what? A lifetime? Huh? We're talking about the fabric, right? The principle of. Brother Rich, does that not sum it up, man? Well, I think it absolutely does. I think it does. And the reason it does is because of exactly what you said and what you understand and what Double J understands. But it's also what we understand that separates a Michael Jordan and a Kobe Bryant. And, and a, a brother Richard. One, and, a that one. and a brother Richard at the road. Well, I mean, it, well, <laughs> well, but it, 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 nevertheless, it, 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 it's to the degree that one measures your, your ability matched with whatever heart you may or may not have or passion you may or may not have or drive you may or may not have. And so when you talk about effort, I've seen people with not as much talent, but they have the effort, Thank which you. is why when we get into these teams, these are the things that that struck me. These are the things that stand out. This is what makes, when we started the first show on this, this series in terms of the Final Four, this is what we all, we all yes. talked about. The yes. fact that what made it March Madness was you never know who's really going to come out of this process. And this is when you get the chance to really see and know these players. And uh, you get to see these teams and see these styles of basketball. So right. I absolutely agree with you. And Double J, before you weigh in, let me, let me read some more here because I want you to weigh in on this particular. And in that moment, when I heard Brevin say this, it made me think of Greg Popovich because you and I both know, and you and all, we all know, Pop is known by all, right? I'm sure we can agree, for his system, quote, unquote. And that system being the standard, even though that standard may not be being exercised by many teams, but we all agree that Pop's system is a standard of of sorts, right? Okay. Standard simply because he understands him being pop. How to convey this? Where you come in, brother Rich, about the coaching uh, agreed. How to convey to his team the importance of what it means to work in tandem? Now let's stop right there. Let's focus on that word tandem, because when I seen that word, I looked it up in the definition of tandem, because it summed up to me all of the basketball I've watched in the last five, six years, if not ten. Do teams really work in tandem? And let me give you the definition of that. There are multiple definitions of tandem, of course, you know, like uh, two horses working in tandem to pull a cart or whatever. You get what I mean? But the one I found that I thought most apropos or applicable to the game and the principles and the fabric and dot, dot, dot that we discuss about basketball, what does it mean to work in tandem? A team so harnessed. Stop right there. Ask yourself from this moment forward, and if you want to from this moment, you can back up a few. How often do you see, especially on the offensive end, regardless of what level it is a game you're watching, how often do you see teams work in tandem? These four that are here, in my estimation or in my opinion, give or are a very good example of teams that work in tandem. Or should I say again, a team that is so harnessed. Now, I'm not saying you two. I'm talking to the audience out there. Do you all really understand and fully grasp the meaning of that expression, if you would, or that statement? A team so harnessed. Do you know how connected you got to be? And I'm saying all of this to say, 
on Facebook, Double J, I'm sure you've seen it. The, all of the chatter and all of the pictures of the arenas and the empty seats because folks are upset that the Blue Bloods are not in it. You've seen that, right, Double J? Absolutely. It's, it's, it's ridiculous. And you know what I said to a guy? I said, man, you, a, you are a Bransky Ball fan because – didn't we not say this already? If you are just a casual fan of basketball, you should, if you're just a casual, then you should have an appreciation for these four, these new bloods that's in it, right? Michigan State is sort of a blue blood, but a new blood because they don't get the conversation, even though they're right there with the Dukes and the Kansas and the Kentucky. They don't get the, 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 the pub that the, the aforementioned, the other three aforementioned do. But in reality, and we're going to bring up an interesting stat from you all, Double J and Brother Rich, and I've added a few, about each one of these teams as we go forward. But briefly, Double J, when I say, again, a team so harnessed, what comes to mind? Prepared, equipped. Mm. Ooh, that was quick. See, brother, did you, feel, did you feel that? That was concise. Waka, waka. Absolutely. You Absolutely. feel what I'm saying? Absolutely. Huh? Because at Absolutely. the end of the day, let me remind you all, not you two, of course, let me remind those who are listening. This show, The Shop Report, was born from the barbershop, and we all understand and know that the barbershop is a cornerstone of every community. But you know what makes the conversation in the barbershop? It comes from real people, real talk in real time. But do you know what makes it really, really makes it what it is? Truth. It's either true or it's not. Even if you have an opinion against or yay or nay, that don't change the fact that it's a truth. And that's what we exercise here, true. We don't say anything on this program that you cannot, if you want or willing to do research, you don't find for yourself. Huh? We don't make this stuff up and then put it out there and say, sources said, put a name on it then, you dig? Huh? Do you all figure deal me out there? So, Brother Rich, a team so harnessed, what, does, what, what comes to mind? Coaching. I go back to that. You know, okay. I'm fundamental with that. Okay. When you use the word harness, you're using a word that translates, and one of its definitions loosely is control. A harness is what gives a rider control of something. Mm. A harness is what gives me the ability to sit and ride something, to participate okay. in an activity. And that thing being harnessed, that's the, you can't put a harness on something that has not been made in some form or fashion or docile that's willing to be harnessed. Gotcha. So you say a rider has broken a horse. So I always, I, that's why I never stray far from coaching. I know that, a, it, that's why you could, you could give us a reflection on good AAU coaches you know, because good basketball players know the value of a coaching for that young. When you got all the talent, era. everybody's passing you. Absolutely okay. correct. It doesn't matter that's the fair. era. It just when you, it, it, era doesn't matter, and none of that matters. That's why when we get to these teams, what do they all have in common? But we'll gotcha. get there. Got you, got you. All right, well, then in that case, let's get started. In the first matchup, this Saturday, the game time is April 6th at 6.09 p.m. At least that's what the time listed says, but we all know it's going to be a pregame before the pregame before the pregame game of the pre's, right? So the, even though the time says 6.09, the actual game might not start till April 7th at 9.17. But anyway, that's the time listed here in the first matchup. Auburn versus Virginia. Now, you know, I'm not real big on seeding, but Auburn, for those of you who are all out there who are, Auburn is the fifth seed going up against Virginia, the number one seed. So we start with Auburn. And there are three things for each team that we've picked that we'd like to point out going into this Final Four. With Auburn, the, one, the first thing is resilience. Double J, what does that mean to you? Resilience. When we're talking, of course, discussing Auburn. It's the next man up mentality. It's the belief that the four brothers that you have next to you, that you're lining up with that's on that floor, 
I like that. Pick you up. I like how you said that. The four brothers. Yeah, let me. Four brothers. He said. Continue. Additionally, the peaks and valleys, because basketball as a whole is nothing more than a game of runs. You will never get too high with the highs. You will never get too lows with the lows. And you will battle back against whatever odds or challenges you come up against. You are resilient. Then we move over to, of course, Auburn's head coach, formerly head coach of Tennessee, and now these Auburn Tigers. Bruce Pearl, Brother Rich. Bruce Pearl, fill in the blank, is what? Amazing. Amazing. Because this is, again, Bruce Pearl to me is a testament of what a good coach does for an average player. And that's why you have a team with no flashy superstars. None of these teams that we're about to discuss has one player like anybody can really tell you, yes, basketball maniacs, those of us who are who follow every element of it may know different players on different teams. Nevertheless, the average fan, these are, this is why you, you, you told us there's so much problems about none of the quote-unquote blue bloods. What do you mean? Kentucky's not in? What about this one? What, because we want to be commercialized. This is real. We're about to watch real basketball. This is why Double J just talked to us about being able to deal with runs and it's up and down because we're about to watch fairly equally balanced teams fight for the national championship. And we haven't seen that in a long time. There's always been some quote unquote. Now I have a favorite. I have somebody in this group I think is more prepared than the others, but nevertheless, we haven't asked for that input. But I this is as balanced as I've remembered going in. And I think in the national championship of college basketball we cannot ask for anything better than this. I actually like that we don't think we don't. I'm not looking forward to just do blowing somebody off the floor on Monday night and it just being no game, but 90,000 people are in the arena. I prefer what we're going to see now, which is a real basketball game. Indeed. And Virginia ultimately win it. Excuse Brother me. Rich, you know what I'm going to give you? I'm going to give you this applause on that one. That was very, very well put. I'm with you on that. Fresh blood. It's brand new. Don't you want to see something new? Huh? And I'm not saying that those teams that are dynasties or have that dynasty element, that's a bad thing because, I hey, I love that Celtics-Lakers thing for a decade. I did. You know what I mean? But, okay, we see what these two can do. Let me see if somebody else can do it. Isn't that compelling? Isn't that what draws us in all the time? Right? I would have to say about Auburn, when I watch these guys play, and I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and tell you that I was hit to them all season, and I, you know, and I know, like some people might. <laughs> we all know those folks that do that kind of stuff. I didn't really get hip to them to the SEC tournament. I mean, I had seen them play a time or two, but not enough for my take, you know, for my taste to be like, oh, yeah, to say he's this or they're going to be that. I'm watching the SEC tournament. You know me, man. I'm always chillaxed when I first start turning on. I got my bunny slippers on and my cup of coffee. You know what I mean? Yes, and I do drink with my pinky out in case you all wanted to let your friends know. I'm sitting here watching, lay back, and I see, I don't even know the little point guard's name. I think it might have been Bryce Brown. Oh, and it was Chuma, the, the guy that's hurt, Chuma Okiki. I sit up and I say, oh, my goodness. I said, wait a minute, throwback moment? I said, are these guys getting ready to take me back down memory lane? Now, I done set the coffee down, and I'm so in tune and intrigued to what I'm seeing in front of me on the screen, the coffee done got cold, man. You know how it is trying to drink cold coffee, man. It don't work, man. So I said, okay, let me get my pen and paper out. You know how I do. Because when I watch these guys play, man, I am reminded of my favorite college basketball team, still, although they had their heyday in the mid-'90s, the Arkansas Razorbacks, that Nola Richardson, 40 minutes of hell. If you're not familiar, go look it up. 
you can see it on YouTube, and you'll see enough of uh, of it on YouTube, and enough YouTube of it to get a real good grasp on just how, now seeing it live, of course, you know, live or Memorex type deal, you know, that's always the best. But Nolan Richardson's 40 minutes of hell. Now, they didn't win championships and all of that, but the teams that did beat Arkansas back in the mid-90s or, you know, late 80s, early 90s to go to championships, you know, the North Carolinas with Rasheed Wallace and Stackhouse, you know, and all them guys, because you had to have them kind of guys to beat that 40 minutes of hell is what I'm trying to tell you. And even the Dukes with the Grant Hills and Bobby Hurley, you get what I'm trying to And the UNLVs with Larry Johnson and Stackhouse and Ackle, George Ackles and Stacey Augman, you, know, you had to have them kind of guys. You understand what I'm trying to tell you? Huh? It took a Joe Frazier to beat a Muhammad Ali is what I'm trying to tell you, and not a Chuck Wepner. You hear what I'm trying to tell you? Man, that, right. Nolan, that Nolan Richardson, them Nolan Richardson Razorbacks, man, they made you work for every ounce of flow. <laughs> okay? 40 minutes of hell is what they called it, and trust me, from end to end. That's why I say if you're a casual fan, Go back and look at, if you can find them, full versions of any of those games when you had Corey Beck and Scotty Thurman, who in particular, by the way, that 1994 team, that Razorback team, was the best. Okay? Yes, it was the best because they beat the Duke Blue Devils. I don't even like saying that name. But anyway, they beat Duke, Corliss Williamson, huh? Scotty Thurman, Corey Beck. I'm not, I'm not, let me, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to go off on no Razorback tangent right now. They made you work for every inch of court from end to end. And you know what? You know how they did it? You go back and watch them. You know what they did? They didn't, they didn't have to put their hands on you. They, they, on defense, they moved their feet well. I tried to tell my son, Dad, guys are so embarrassed about being crossed up and crossed over, you know, because they don't want to be on YouTube. I said, guess what? If you know how to move your feet, you ain't got to worry about being crossed up and crossed over. But there ain't no hand checking. That's my point. Okay, so the NBA is no hand checking. We get it. But that's still not an excuse for not moving your feet. Because I've seen guys, even right now, let's Kawhi Leonard, for instance. He, he, he played defense in 2019, right? At a high level. Right? Yeah, you can move your feet. You ain't got to touch nobody uh, with cool. your hand. Yeah, come on now. But where did Kawhi learn that, Jay? Where did well, Kawhi we, learn that? That's well, a we, drill we got when we were learning to play basketball. Oh, of coaches teaching you how to move to side to side. Oh yeah, that's yeah, a drill you learn. Oh, of course, of course, of course. No, no, I mean, I'm, I'm not. Yeah, of course, I, I don't argue that. No, of course, I'm just, I'm just pointing out that, you know, these kids nowadays say the reason why they don't play defense, um, you know, to me it's just you're just being lazy because defense is effort. You know what I mean? And I already told you all about what Kawhi Leonard does and how he he's um, catered his defense to, you know, the, to, the today B.A. You know, he has a defensive chart and a breakdown, man, on every opponent he's ever faced. But we'll get into that later. I'm telling you, the dude is remarkable. But, yeah, when I watch Auburn, man, they get after you from, on, from end to end. They don't stop. That's when we – double J, you said resilience. My goodness. It's – I don't even. I can't even really find a word to describe. I mean, maybe you might see something. The ferocity. There we go. Okay, I've only seen that kind of ferocity, man. When I watch the Nature Channels, when the lions haven't eaten in a week, you know, I feel bad for the baby llamas. You get what I'm trying to tell you? Because you know they don't stop. They coming to get you. But that's the Auburn Tigers. On the other side of the ledger, we got Virginia, who I must. I got to point out, I'm impressed. Okay that, excuse me, at how they were able to bounce back this season after last season's early exit in the loss to UMBC. That was last season, right, Double J? Correct. Okay, yeah, yeah, which was disappointing because that's that was my whole point about the seeding thing a few shows ago about you can be ranked number one, number two, three, four, and five, especially when it comes to college football. How often have we seen the number four ranked team look like crap Okay, against the number 13th ranked team. And a few years back, my bad, Double J, my fault. I don't mean to. Then we see Appalachian State defeat Michigan. I, I was oh. there. Oh, whoa, whoa, okay, whoa, whoa, whoa. All right, well, we're not going, we're not going to stay there with it. But I'm just making a point. I'm just making a point. But I'm impressed by how they bounced back, you know, after last season's exit, early exit, and are now in the Final Four. So, Brother Rich, let me ask you, when you see Virginia, it's defense that comes to mind as well, right? 
Absolutely. And I, what comes to mind with them is finally. Finally, yeah, finally because yes. everyone has anticipated that they should have been there a few tournaments ago. And for them to have finally gotten there, you have people that are very, I, I consider myself one of them, that are very happy that they finally made it, if you will. In, in, uh, because he's been trying to put this team together. And, and again, coaching, believing in your coach, putting together a team. Look, uh, sidebar, look for Bruce Pearl probably to be in the NBA next year or the next the year after really? that because he's proved, oh, yeah, he's proven he can coach. Gotcha. He's a coach. These are coaches. These gotcha. are people that can really coach, and that's what we're looking at here. Teams, put teams that have been put together. These are not one and done fly by night superstars. This is not come to Kentucky just to learn what it's like, get ready for your NBA career. Because it's none of that. This is look. I researched these teams for the show. These are third year players, second year players, fifth year seniors. These are these are these are basketball players. This is a team. These guys have to be coached. Yeah. Virginia, he's gotten his team that he wanted and they believe in him and they're ready to make their run. You know what? Let me say this too. Um another point I meant to mention about Mich- I mean um Auburn right quick. Do you know that they are from top to bottom? They got a veteran roster? They got one, two. Three. Exactly right. Yeah, exactly four, right. They got like four seniors, forty-five juniors, twelve sophomores. He's a team, and one freshman. He's a team. <laughs> I mean, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, <laughs> that's what it seemed like. Team. My goodness, you know what I mean? So yeah, they. And you know, in this day and age of one and done or no and none, you know, um, yeah, you don't, you don't, uh, you don't see that. But you, Double J, let's go back to Virginia. Let me ask you: Are they masterful at mucking the game up? And I ask you that because of this. Do you know that the, the PA points against a game? They're first out of 353 teams at 55.4. Break that down for me, man. Are Absolutely. They, are, yeah, they're good at mucking up the game, aren't they? They run a zone that rivals Dukes. Now, they did go 0 for 2 against Duke this season, one of which being a little bit closer than the other. However, they – they are a team that, in football, you would say they win. If they win in the trenches, that they Got do the you. little That's things. That's a good analogy. I like they that. have the length inside with Nkite. Uh They have hustlers in Guy and in, in Jerome. Um, that you know, again, they're very balanced. But again, and, and additionally, the basketball IQ. From the player level, again, we, you know, as Brother Rich was pointing out, we're not, this is not player X and insert team. This is yeah. the team. You're yeah. going to hear more about the head coaches than you're going to hear about individual players in this Final Four. And that's a great thing because that's the way it should be. That's the way it used to be. Sure, you have a strong individual athlete. However, when you're looking at Across the board, you're seeing teams, teams, and they're going to play their style of basketball. And in Virginia's case, that was my biggest concern going into last weekend with against my alma mater was that I knew it, generally speaking, was going to be a low-scoring affair and that they can beat you in so many different ways offensively, but most importantly, they are going to do – something that only the 2004 Pistons were capable of doing, which is lock you down from start to finish. And that was another example of a team. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to this matchup. You know, we'll get to who we think will win and won't win, so on and so forth, after we discuss, of course, in the second game of our doubleheader, so to speak, which also is Saturday, which is supposed to be start time at 8.49. So they might start the other game on time. At 8.49 p.m. is, of course, Texas Tech at number three seed versus Michigan State, the number two seed. Now, let me, let's me let talk Texas Tech here for a minute. I found an interesting stat. Do you know that Texas Tech is third behind Virginia in points allowed? <laughs> but guess what, though? Not to mention... 
they gotten there primarily, and they have a few seniors. They got they get sort of veteran laden as well. But you know they're Absolutely. top. They only have three score three guys that average double figures. They've gotten this far. On what? Principal defensive principal primarily. Moretti, David Moretti, Matt Mooney, and Jared Culver are the only three players who average double figures. Now I'm I'm sitting here looking. I don't know if it's well I, this is on the season. I'm sitting here looking at it. Let me double check here. It could be for the the tournament, you know, in the you know conference tournaments and such. But either either way, huh? So it's defense, and they too resemble Auburn, not literally, but figuratively in terms of the style of play. How often do we mention that term? You don't have to get that on the shirt. Style of play. It ain't what you're doing. It's how you're doing it. You get what I'm saying? And again, although I didn't play at a collegiate level, I played intramural OU, but I, I'm not, you know, not no D1 or whatnot. Man, when I'm coming off the bench or sitting on the bench, I was engaged the whole time. If I wasn't out there, I was engaged. Hey, coach, hey, man, how many timeouts we got? Because like the coach, and this is why some players, are Brother Rich, again, to your point, this is why some, not all, former players who as players may not have been the household names but turn out to be good head coaches, if not pretty darn good head coaches, because, and we've heard this expression, man, a guy's like a coach on the bench, you know, a coach on the floor, so to speak, because, those players, when they on the bench or in, in other in practices or whatever it is, they're 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 adding that the game element to the mentality. Does that make sense at all? Absolutely. Okay, got you. These Texas Tech Red Raiders have gotten here primarily on gut and guile, huh? Rolling the sleeves up, huh? You got to get put what, what what our mamas used to say. What our grandparents and all our parents and our elders used to say when you're going to cut the grass and you, Ma, I can't do it. What you mean you can't? Boy, you better put some elbow grease in it. <laughs> That's what, how they play. They put some elbow grease on it. Right. You know what I mean? When they show up to the gym, actually, really, you could really say that about all four teams. Now, who's more or less? I don't know. But Texas Tech, man, listen. When they walk in the gym, Guess what the most, most – well, you got to be the opposition like a Michigan State. Only only the three other teams wouldn't probably say this. But for the most part, outside of the other three combatants, when, when Texas Tech roll up in the gym, you on the other side, you're like, oh, man, I got to deal with these dudes again. You're like, you know what, hold my beer. No, I'm just kidding. You know what I'm saying? Oh, man, no, no, no. What you doing? You calling home like, look, telling the wifey, um, yeah, it's going to be a minute. You know what I mean? Just put my dinner in the microwave. Appreciate you. Love you. Bye. You already know you're in for it. So not only do they have the deep roster, but one of you all mentioned scheme and strategy of these Red Raiders, and in particular, Coach Chris Beard. Brother Rich, weigh in on that, would you? Well, again, this is a coach that I call him a one-and-done coach, and he's reflective of – I. When, I, when you initially asked us about Texas Tech, my question to, with them was, who invited them to the party? Because <laughs> yeah, this is a team, you. again, another team where you, 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 you don't hear about them. This is a, this is a uh, uh, third-year players, transfers, junior play, college players. This is a man who flies in town, puts together the team, inspires some players. Again, a mm-hmm. coach that is, is serious about the profession of coaching and the game of basketball and schemes and putting together plots and plans of study. He, this man is a man that does this every day of the, every hour of every day of every day of the year where he's working on different things and has played and has gone over here to coach and gone over here to coach and is really a professional coach. So he's able to inspire the players and put the players together and drive the players and encourage the players to go out here and perform at an elite level and give it their all. These are not gentlemen we're going to hear about most of them at the next level. These are not people, most of these teams, we're not going to hear about any of these players at the next level. These players are doing exactly what you were talking about when you gave us a quote earlier about effort. This is a, these, are, gotcha. this, these players are putting in the effort, yes. Double J, what you got to say? 
he, Chris Beard is going to be coaching a program or an NBA team. He's, he's going to be coaching either uh, a North Carolina, if Roy Williams were to, to retire. Right. He will be in one of those blue blood programs. Mm. This is someone that comes from the, the Bobby Knight and Pat Knight coaching tree. Mm. Um, does not get, other than Jarrett Culver, there's no, no one on that list of that roster that is a lottery pick or in that conversation at all. Wow. Uh, what he teaches, you know, he teaches defense. We, we, you know, it's that old thing of defense wins championships. Yeah. What I admire the most about him specifically, because again, we're talking about a couple of coaches here that remain that are very good at beating my alma mater. And so I've been watching them for a few years now. Chris Beard did it with, with Arkansas little rock. Um, and That's he did right. it again last year. That's right. And so with what he does, again, he does not have that flashy team that's going to get you those recruits. This is not NBA Jam with him. However, he builds these teams that can withstand any tempo and style of play, which is why they're in every single game. But to take it a step further, again, I'll fall back on that defense where he limits these teams to about 36.5% shooting, which is atrocious uh, <laughs> for the opponent. Yeah. You're not going to win games shooting that percentage. And so, you know, again, overall, uh, the future is very bright for him, but he's got a senior-led team with, four, you know, I believe he has four seniors on, on this roster actively, mm-hmm. um, and they're not going to be an easy out. And they will beat you and force you into bad shots consistently. So it is going to be a very interesting game. Uh, and Tom Izzo has his work cut out for him. I agree. And speaking of Tom Izzo and the Michigan State Spartans, they are the last squad on the docket, so to speak. Let me point out to you something interesting, I think, that I found about the Spartans in particular to the NCAA tournament. They have appeared, and I didn't know this, the Spartans have in 33 Division One tournaments, basketball tournaments, with a current streak of 22 straight years, with two NCAA, of course, national championships. They have appeared in 10 Final Fours, and they sport a 64-30 all-time NCAA tournament record. Now, let me stop right there for a minute, because I saw a Facebook post where – some, I can't even think of, I'm not going to mention his name, even if I could remember his name. Guy mentioned, try to basically put them down for not being, you know, why, why, if they, Michigan State is all that, how come recruits don't want to go there? Or how come they not, you know what I mean, you know, top level, you know, and the guy said, look, man, everybody know about the Dukes, the Kentuckys, and the Kansases, and all that kind of stuff. Tom Izzo gets guys who are not highly recruited, and he does what? What George Carl once said which I will always point out anytime we're talking the subject of basketball. And I heard George Carl say this because he was on a show on the NBA TV. See how this all comes together? I can't remember who the guy was sitting next to him, but, of course, he was caught up in the moment <clears throat> in this basketball era of basketball. Yeah, well, you know, you know, he's that one player, and you got to have a star. And you da, 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 da. George Carl was like, look, man, that's how you all have made it, so to speak. Well, you got to have a star first and then get a team. <clears throat> he said, yeah, that's like a, you know, a hot pocket. That's what I call it. That's a microwave moment. He said, but if you're trying to be here today and tomorrow and tomorrow and the day after that, he said, build a team and let a star emerge. That's what Michigan State is. Reminiscent of that to me. Who's the star? Double J, who's the star for Michigan State? Well, uh, I would say the star that emerged was Cassius Winston. Okay, holla at your boy. <laughs> yeah. Floor would have general. Been, Floor general. Exactly. The star should have been, and can be still, Nick Ward. Okay. <clears throat> Who That's fair. Coming back from, yeah. from the injury. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah, that's fair. Brother Rich, let me ask you this. Two words come to mind when I watch the Spartans. Because of the four that are in it, 
Would you say the Spartans are more experienced? You know, we just mentioned 33 times, you know, that, you know, they have, they've been here many, more, you know, they've been in this moment more times. Two words that come to mind, fundamentally sound. Would you agree or disagree when it comes to the Spartans? What, without a doubt, but I would say that uh, Tom Izzo is, is the star. Ah. And Tom Izzo is more experienced than Tom okay. Izzo. And that's why I think that ultimately they're going to triumph over Texas Tech because you've got a master here. This is a master. Mm, it's a master. Right. And so you, you've, got a, a, you've got a young, great coach on the other side. But he's, being, he's going up against a guy who is just as adept at taking <clears throat> mid-level talent, let's be honest, you yeah. see? Yeah. And taking them to the next level, and and bringing out of them the best, and taking a junior player and making him even, and showing that he has the potential to be a collegiate star. Whether or not he can translate to the next level at this level, he he is adept. He's skilled enough to do what needs to be done. And so this is why I believe that in this game they'll prevail and go on to meet Virginia in the final. Uh, uh, game Monday night. You know, you got ahead of us on that one. You was wrong for that, brother. So oh, okay. going, yeah, nah, yeah. no, nah, yeah. please. You know what you was doing. Double J, final thought oh, hey. on Michigan State, hey, on hey. Michigan State, excuse me, before we have the final say about the tournament and the winners and losers, of course. Go ahead. I think Michigan State falls just under those four teams, those the Kansas is the Dukes, the North Carolinas, and the Kentuckys. I think they, they generally get overlooked. But, again, you talked a lot about the consistency of Tom Izzo um, being able to get the recruits, sometimes five stars, sometimes not. Uh, but, again, if you look at the laundry list of athletes that have came from the university that, you know, to the next level – um, you know, more recently with Draymond Green, or uh, mm-hmm. it guy is able to get the most out of his players year in and year out, and so it's going to be a very interesting matchup because of the fact that he's been there on so many occasions. There's you get to a point where there's not a, there's nothing new here. You're not going to see a new scheme or a new tactic. You know, you and so it will be interesting how these two, you know, it, it'll be a dogfight. And that's we're in store for ultimately two great games and one heck of a national title game. I don't, I don't see anyone blowing anybody out, and uh, it'll, it'll be exciting to say the least. I, I'm, well, I'm here to tell you right now. <clears throat> excuse me. I think both games are going to be some good old fashioned woodshed barn burners which is what basketball on all levels is missing. Man, I'm so tired of trying to watch a sports program, and I have to hear about some guy who was talking bad and tweeting and all of that. We got so far away from the game, man. You know you know my line, Brother Rich, Double J, huh? About the storylines are now creating the game, where it used to be the game created yeah. the storylines. That's what drew See. people into the arenas, the game. You understand? Huh? Not this drama. Which which rapper in the, this player's posse is beefing with that rapper? Man, stop it. You know what I mean? But, oh, he better than him because he averaged eight more points than him. Yeah, but in the moment that matter, I see him shrink anyway. You get the idea. So, Brother Rich, we'll start with you before we get out of here. In the Auburn-Virginia matchup, say again for the audience, please. Who wins it? Virginia. <clears throat> Double J. I think I, I see oh, Auburn as the uh, the invitees to the one of the invitees to the party, but this is where the invitation runs out. Mm. Double J. Auburn, Virginia. Who you? What, what's happening? I'm also going to go Virginia. I think that they they have the the right caliber. They have all the right pieces to the puzzle here. And then additionally, this is where the absence of O'Keefe is going to be uh, really evident. Yeah. Well, I, of course, am going to go on the contrary, Ari. I'm riding with Bruce Pearl and Auburn to the wheels fall off, baby. 40 minutes of he hockey sticks, 
Arkansas Razorbacks 2.0. I'm picking Auburn. We have to see how that shakes out. In our other matchup, Double J, we'll start with you. Texas Tech, Michigan State, who you got? I'm actually going to go Michigan State here. Hold up, uh, hold on, stop, think- stop, 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 stop. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Now, is this coming from, is this a homer? Huh? Is this, this coming from, or is this just basket? You're just coming from a basketball standpoint. That's just not a homer standpoint, right? But purely basketball. I, okay. You know, despite okay. Chris Beaver being there for three years. Okay. Um, or, you know, he presently, I don't think, has enough yet. Uh, okay. This Michigan State team, again, just went up against the top three picks in next year's draft and was able to, in, in addition to a Hall of Fame coach, um, and found a way to win. No, 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 no. Uh, they I, 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 have, hold, up, hold that thought. Let me, let, me, let me say that. Let me sum that up for you. Found a way to win, I would prefer to say, grinded them to a halt. Continue. And uh, with that being said, the – that combination of, of Winston and, and Ward, a healthy Ward, is going to be a, a little bit of a nightmare for Texas Tech. And unlike their rivals, that being Michigan State with Michigan, they have a McQuaid who will – I mean, he, he's a guy that I think I personally overlooked, uh, but he will – find a way you know to to dive for a loose ball he does all the little things he will mm-hmm. hit a big bat it seemed like when they were getting ready to go shell shocked uh, from from duke's run the you know just a few days ago he himself took the ball and then uh went air jordan on them and uh and everything else we saw how that you know played out following from that particular uh situation so I think Tom Izzo finds his way into a national title game again. All right. Brother Woods, we put it back to you before we get out of here due to time constraints, unfortunately. Say again for us, who do you have in the national championship and who do you have winning it? I couldn't have said it better. Michigan State wins and Virginia wins it all. Whoa. So you got Michigan State and Virginia in it and you got Virginia winning it all. Okay, I'm writing that down, Brother Rich. Now you know. Might have to cash that in. Okay. Brother Rich says, Virginia, Double J, who do you have? Say again for the people, of course, the two combatants, the two finalists, and who's winning it all? I also have uh, Michigan State and Virginia, and I believe that this is the year that uh, Virginia does pull it off. And I will have the last word for the day before we get out of here. And, of course, as always, guys, good stuff. I have Auburn, Michigan State. Huh? And I'll say this to you. Make sure that you've done all your chores for the day. Okay? Make sure that you give the wife your credit card. Let her go shopping for about 12 hours. Let, just, just have the house to yourself. Okay? Turn your cell phone off. I'm All those, be, get disconnected. And do and and you only want to connect to this one because this is going to be Michigan State and Auburn. And I'm trying to tell you, record it if you can, huh? If you got a VHS record, I mean, record it on any device, whether it's CD, DVD, ROM, whatever it is, you want to make sure you capture this one because this one is going to be one for the record books, baby. And I got Michigan State winning it all. And on that note, it's been fun, but we got to run. We appreciate y'all for listening. Don't forget to check us out right here on the Spreaker.com network. You go to the shop, excuse me, go to the search box and type in the shop report. Actually, when you go to Spreaker.com, they have, um, you know, the little icon with the, the magnifying glass or whatever. Or you can type ex- explore is the best way to do that. And you type in, of course, the shop report. Or you can check us out on Facebook, Twitter, iTunes, and, of course, via email, the shop report. 365 at gmail.com. And if that don't work, Google it. For my guests, Double J and Brother Rich NYC, a.k.a. Rucker Park, and all those who follow us on social media, we say thank you for your support. I'm Barbershop J, and you've been listening to The Shop Report. And remember, the next time y'all want to know what's really going on, man, come to the shop. Walk-ins are always welcome. 
Holla.